and rotate. Got the correct name. And rotate. We are recording. Yes, we are recording. Okay. All right. Dad. So, in other words, uh, Nick, I hear you. So, in other words, if oh. we uh, screw up today, it's all on tape. <laughs> all right, excellent. <laughs> oh. Well, Only you would say that one, Dennis. Everyone. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're cruel. <Good> <laughs> oh. Not cruel. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to another day of Living City of Raven's Bluff. Today's module, LCRB 10-6, All the World's a Stage. Yay. Uh, the, yay, the blurb. <laughs> Something is <laughs> rotten in Drazen Humphreys Theater. Oh, and for dead. once, it's not just the plays. All things will become clear once you take the stage yourselves. An adventure recommended for characters levels 1 through 4. This module will cost one day unit. And you should tell the people that one of our... Yeah. Not, not I'm so ready. loud, Nick. Not so loud, Nick. I, we can hear you. Well... In fact, your mic is kind of picking up my voice. Yes, it is. Well... So mute your mic. You should probably tell the people that one of our characters is not in today. Okay. Tell you what, Nick. What? There we go. What'd you do? You can still hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I was t talking to Nick. Okay, babe. Sorry. <laughs> yep. We can hear okay. him. Okay. So, so wait. You well, I was picking up an echo off of Nick's mic, so I muted his mic. Yeah. Really? You yeah. said you wanted to listen. Yeah, while talking to all of you. Well, if you want to talk and stuff. Put the black path on this play, but all right. Anyways, bringing them back on. Thank you. <coughs> Who's coughing in the background? Not me. Oh, no. Me, Nick. <laughs> all right, there. Yes, we go. you finally get to talk to me. Yay! I I turned his <laughs> mic volume down. <laughs> okay. So as I said, one day unit. And as we begin today, it's a nice midsummer day. And it's a lovely day in the city of Raven's Bluff. But around noon, clouds begin to creep in. And it looks like the weather could turn by nightfall. Now, we've been wandering around the city, relaxing on one of our first real days off in some time. And as the module begins, we find ourselves in the Market District. Strolling past the storefronts, feeling, enjoying the feeling of life in the city of adventurers. From down the street, you hear a bell ringing. Ding. And a shrill voice rising, rising above the dead. You can't make out the words, but the shouter is coming towards you. Bring out your dad. Bring out your dad. Dead. Oh, right, dead. here's one. Uh, 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 he's oh, not, not dead, dead yet. Yeah, oh, right, you'll be stone dead here in just a moment. Yeah, classic. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Say what, Nick? Okay, you left? Okay. Um, you laugh, you lose. As you get closer, you can see that it is one of those sandwich board holders. Mm. You know, little triangle board, you know, mm. one in front, one in back. <laughs> yeah. Eat it, Sharky. And on the front, on the front, <laughs> as he approaches you, you can see the words, see the lady mayor's petticoats. At the Beaumont Theater. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> a small crowd is following him, looking puzzled and trying to figure out why he's shouting such strange things. Oh, by the way, the person with this sandwich board, yes, he's a gnome. <laughs> oh, joy. <laughs> All right. This is one reason why I love you, babe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's yelling, come on down to the Beaumont. The gnome rings his bell hard as he approaches and sees that you're actually paying attention. Great show. Limited engagement. Brilliant work. Come to the Beaumont. See the Lady Mayor's petticoats. I ask you, who wouldn't like to see the Lady Mayor's petticoats? <laughs> I am just, at this point, I am turning about three or four shades of red at this point. It's like, I... I think I went three. Well, at least it's not the Lord Mayor's pick. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would be... to go there. Oh, I don't even want to go there. No, no. Neither do I. Just the imagery I'm seeing right now is just like... Yeah. And, um... <laughs> And it's surprising that he hasn't worn a track down the middle of the street because he suddenly stops, turns, and heads back the way he came, ringing his bell and shouting. You're able now to see the back of his sandwich board, and it reads, Brave Adventurers Needed at the Beaumont Theater. Apply nightly. And nightly is spelled with a K, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at the real and it's he, like, he looks the back at, he looks back at you. He looks back at you. You adventurers, you look kinda like adventurers. <clears throat> you ought to stop by the Boma tonight. Great show. He leans in conspiratorially. I ought to know. I wrote most of it. Well, a bit about petticoats anyways. <laughs> even out even without petticoats, so the boss is looking for more adventurers. You all look like you could do some work, am I right? Pretty powerful folks, aren't you? Am no. I right? Come on. Here's how you get there. And he gives you directions to the Beaumont Theater. Wow. Which he's, is, he's got a hard sail. Yeah, which is on the outskirts of Crow's End. All right, all right. Yeah, I suppose we could mosey on down there. I mean, after all, this ought to be interesting. I don't see a problem with it. Okay, this what does well, Rube Adventure He says, for? oh, his name is uh, Drazen Humphrey. He's the owner of the Beaumont Theater. Uh, you show up around six bells or so to see the play, then talk to the boss afterwards. Um, that's when he always talks to adventurers. The boss never will talk to anybody before performance. Superstition, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um. He's had some weird things happen at the theater. I'm not sure what, but he's been hiring adventurers to come in and check things out, but it hasn't gotten any better. Mm -hmm. And you don't... So? So strange things, but you don't know what exactly they are, so... Nope, just heard the boss talking about strange... Uh, Strange things are afoot at the Vermont Theater. All right. I lean into Aurelia conspiratorially and I say, Strange things are afoot at the Beaumont. Indeed. All right. So, yeah, I suppose we'll mosey on down there. Okay. I wonder just how strange things are. Mm hmm. They're, they're as strange as some of the dreams I've had over the last couple nights here. Here, I think we're in for. <laughs> I think we're in for an interesting night. <laughs> don't, okay. Don't Something lie. else in the culture couldn't hurt. No. What? Hey, possible work, money, guys. I got shopping to do. Yes, Aurelia, uh, we know yeah. that. <laughs> All you ever do is yeah. shop. <laughs> Come on, I like I shopping. To find I know! <laughs> yeah, well, Spoiled uh, little hey. princess. 
hey, 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 hey. And it's like, I, I'm trying to break this up here. Here, it's like, <laughs> hey, ladies, hey, ladies. Take it easy or you get Marova for a roommate. Oh. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 I mean, after okay, all, I... really, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. All right, all right. Oh, thank you. You're right. So, yeah. And people wonder. Yeah, it's like, here I am playing the George mother. And it's like, <laughs> like ladies, goes, ladies. People, Marova <laughs> just shakes his head and goes, and people wonder why I love the living. <laughs> <laughs> and I get that so, creeped out look again. Hmm. It's like, what is up with you and necromancy? I don't know what's up with. It is, necromancy. The, it is the one true science. Would you like to read? Uh, no. Would you like to read? No. It's the one where men don't no. talk back. <laughs> no. You want to read a book on it? Turn, turn to page 394. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, okay. No comment. All right. Anyways. <laughs> So I take it we're going to the Beaumont. Yes, we are going. There. Yes. Okay. Well, we arrive at the Beaumont Theater shortly before six bells. For a theater you've never heard of until today, it doesn't look awful. Oh. The wooden front of the building is in good repair. None of the boards are warped or rotten, and all the windows are all whole. Uh, that's unusual. I mean, in uh, I'm sorry, but that's unusual in of itself in the fact that it's crow's in to begin with. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, a marquee over the front door advertises, See the Lady Mayor's Petticoats, a Drazen Humphrey production, which seems to have attracted something of an odd crowd, mostly male, mostly scruffy. Well, you are near crow's end. And probably not at all the usual theater-going group. Strangely, most of them seem to have donned neckties for the evening. <laughs> Although some of them neglected to wear a shirt with their ties. Oh, God. The line at the <laughs> ticket window is short. <laughs> am, I the only, am I the only sane person in this city? I thought I was. Like, I pay. Okay, but well, Roy really goes up to Linda goes, she goes, hi, we're adventurers. And we were told that they're hiring adventurers. And the lady in ticket window goes, reaches in the drawer, gets out five passes. She goes, you tell them you're the last lot I'm letting them hire. Four bunch of, of idiots is too many. Tell them you better get the job done. And, well, let's, uh, well, let's, first things first, let's find out what the job is, per se. We haven't been given okay. much in the way of uh, <laughs> right. details about it. Okay, well, you go into the theater, and you're shown to, oh, you actually got fourth row seats. Surprisingly, the inside of the theater is almost as nice as the outside. S sure, you're seated on you know, wooden chairs, and so there's some nasty look looking splinters sticking out here and there, but it's clean. It's warm too, but that more from all the people who are crammed into a relatively small space than anything else. You're four rows from, from the stage, so you're going to have a good view of everything that goes on tonight. Mm. The lights go down. And the crowd settles somewhat. A woman walks on stage wearing a petticoat and whistles and cat calls erupt from all over. Woohoo! Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the special showing of the ladies' mayor's petticoat. She waves the petticoats around, then wanders back off stage, and other performers begin making appearances. The play proceeds without any plot of note, and no transitions from one performer to another side of the, 
the tossing of that same petticoat back and forth as someone new takes the stage. Still, the mere presence of petticoats is enough to keep most of the audience enthralled and enough to keep the Kura's face red. <laughs> <laughs> you are about to nod off from the jury performance when a halfling comes on stage with a bowl of tropical fish. Yes. He plucks fish after fish from the bowl and begins juggling them. Okay, that... Then from off stage, Boring. someone tosses him the petticoat, <laughs> which he works into his juggle flawlessly, keeping the petticoats and eight fish aloft without so much as a hitch. <laughs> Okay. One fish hits the floor. <laughs> oh dear. Then the other oh. then the other seven hit, followed by the petticoat. The halfling looks up very confused and twitches. He then shrieks and his body expands in all possible directions. What the Standing before you on the stage is a very large very hungry looking bear. Oh, <laughs> Please note the map. Got it. Uh oh. It says, well, you must admit the, the special effects are rather impressive. Yeah. The hungry look yeah, the hungry looking bear seems to have forgotten he was ever a halfling. As the crowd watches, stunned, he scoops up the fish and eats them, then turns his attention to the audience. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. What <laughs> are you going to do? Um, uh, well... Try not to scream. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, one of those... Uh, uh, oh, so this is one of those interactive audiences that participate yeah, and so forth. Yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Is right. the bear eating on the petticoats? Is this part of the? Uh, is this uh, part of the? Show? No, the bear looks like it's about ready to start eating audience members. Oh, okay. So, oh, uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's not let that happen. Yeah, let's not let that happen. Uh, Please. Uh, everybody, start rolling initiative. Yes, with our vast initiative. Oh, Mar Marova is fast. So Marova, Sakura, the bear, Miko, Aurelia, and we're waiting at Talana. Terry, we're waiting on Talana's initiative. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay. Remember the little bar up top? Yeah. Give me one second. Ow. Yep, there okay, we go. There we go. There we go. And Talana, who for some reason does not have a name tag. Hold on. Let me add one in, okay? Um, actually, she does there. It's just... <laughs> it's just hidden between Aurelia and Morova. Okay. Yeah, oh, so, she, so Morova's first. Make things a little easier. Morova is gonna look at something because he, this might, this spell might actually work. Yeah, the spell might work, and Sakura's yes. probably not gonna like it. Yes, yes, it will. Uh oh. 
Marova <laughs> will cast a spell. Cast a spell on the grizzly you'll love. <laughs> the bear will now make a will save. The uh, problem is I don't think it's in range. Yeah, it's out of range. <coughs> yeah, it is. 25, yeah. So he will actually... Let me see if he's out of rank. Let me see if he's in rank now. Probably not yet. Yeah. No. Nope. So guess further. what he'll do this round? And magic so missile. Instead wand. of doing, instead of doing cause fear, <laughs> he will instead. Hopefully, he doesn't misspell it and cause bear instead. <laughs> right. <laughs> he will do two rounds of damage to the bear via a magic missile spell. Okay, Terlana. Yes. You are actually uh Yeah, yeah, it should say anime. Uh what is the what is this? That's actually Talana, your fig is right there. There what, I am. Uh, what are you trying to palm on me here? <laughs> Whatever I feel like. <laughs> I am a there woman. You go. <laughs> oh, it's something you remind us of every day. Hold on. This is why I love you guys. Hold on. I'm going to put Terry back in the... Uh, Hold on. We're having technical difficulties. Stand by for tower. Team. Yeah. <laughs> she has a 14. Oh. All right. So I'm once again... There we go. All right, Carolina, you're up. Okay. What do I want to do? Probably going to attack with, with something or move. Mm. You can do all attacks. You can shoot your bow. Okay, let's go with the bow. Mm. Oh, Ooh. nice, nice. A very nice hit, and you do have initiative on him. He is still flat-footed. So guess what? You hit but again, a no total of a Say what? That would be within 30 feet to do sneak damage with a missile. Okay, so, well, she did five. And did a total of seven. All right, Sakura. Yes, and, You're up. Uh, and I will go ahead and uh, pull my bow out and uh, take a little pot shot at Mr. Grizzly Bear. And hold on. Six. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Now, unfortunately, the 13 does not confirm. I'm still a palatable hit, though. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, 
You don't get any pluses to that, do you? No, I don't. No, I haven't cast flat anything. Foot is, flat foot is 15, but you will do 6 damage to him. Not bad. Yeah, and I let roll like bare minimum on the uh, possible crit there, so. Sucks. Alright, the bear. Bear who has been mildly inconvenienced. Will jump down off the stage. Oh boy. In the meantime, oh crap. people <laughs> are clearing out. <laughs> and he is uh the bear is uh he will uh, attack um one of the patrons with a claw and knock knock a poor little old woman down. Yeah. Nico. Hey, uh, since it very uh, thoughtfully moved into point blank range. There we go. She will fire at it. Uh, does it does it count as being in melee with uh, some of those people? Uh, I would say no. Okay. I would have to agree with that. I second Plus, that. Teen and a ten. Uh, the sixteen will hit. So that will be nine points ten, of damage. Ten points because it's point blank. Okay, it takes it. Uh, hey, I'm just trying Aurelia. to eat meat here. Five, ten, Might be old and tenderized there, but it's still meat. Aurelia will move into melee range. And she'll attack with Scimitar. Of course, she misses. But the bear kindly moved into melee range. For now, Morova's spell. And at this point, he will cast Cause Fear. And the bear will need to make a will save. DC 15. Ooh, and it, it makes it. A paired boo. I look at Morova and I go... Uh, I don't think the bear cares that much about fear. It's like, check my head. Delana. Yeah. You're up. Okay, give me one. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My headset just came out of my head. <laughs> came out of your head? <laughs> out of my ears what I meant. You're, Jeez. She's wearing your earbuds. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> she's wearing a golden retriever in her ears. Earbuds. <laughs> <laughs> earbuds, ear not earbuds. <laughs> You guys are a bunch of asses, but I still love you. <laughs> hey, we're just entertaining the masses here. This is true. And I think I can do a short sword. So that. you're going to move into attack it? Yeah. All right, I'll move your thing up. Thanks, and yes, you will hit. You're not in sneak damage, but you do, but you do a total of seven damage to it, and it's starting to look a little worse for wear. Sakura, it's okay. Well, you know, since it's a melee now, I'm gonna forego the uh, bow here, but I'm going to go ahead and da, 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 da. <laughs> I will move up to there. 
like this. Yeah, you know, I can catch uh, most of you with the bless here, so I will go ahead and cast that, and then uh, and then uh, Divine Vessel is gonna hit Aurelia Morovan myself. Okay. Now, so we'll start with the bless. Uh, bless goes up. So we're at plus one to hit. Yeah, right, and then uh, now you have that one time plus two. All right. Well, the grizzly bear has people in front of it now, so... Yes, meaty people. It will... Not old women. <laughs> yeah, some old women are pretty meaty, though. <laughs> so it will attack three times on a really a claw, claw bite. Ooh. Claw <laughs> will hit. Claw will hit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not liking it. Uh-oh. Not liking it. No, absolutely not. It's really a dead. I don't think so. Uh, Ouch. She, she, Ouch. And Aurelia is at negative nine. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Right. Yes, and... Miko, you're up. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, seeing her go down hard. Actually, Aurelia was at one. Yeah, she had negative nine. I don't think I missed for that. <laughs> yep. That's br how many hit points does she have normally? Like eleven. Eleven. Uh, yeah. Okay, Miko, you're up. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to think. Get to her that way. I can attempt to get to her. Chances aren't good, but at least got to give it a try. So she will attempt to tumble her way across the road of seats to get next to her. All right. So since she's moving at regular speed, that's at minus five. To decide what the DC would be, here goes. Oh, so that's a 20. oh that yeah that'll do it. You can do a nice little flip in midair and make it over to her. Okay, so she will get will attempt to stabilize. Which would be a heel check. I think that'll do it. So what, Nick? Seven. Oh, yes, that will definitely uh, stabilize her. Yeah. She's good because otherwise they're she's going out. Gonna yeah, but... When did I order it? Last night. Okay. Uh, so Aurelia is in Dreamland. Uh, more than Dreamland, Jesus. It's major time. Yeah, I'm Marova. We'll zap it again. Yeah, this please. time for three points. Please continue zapping at your discretion. Yeah. <laughs> Talana, you're up. 
You can use uh, your sword. Okay. And if you take a five-foot step, you'll be in flanking. Okay. If you move right there, you'll be flanking with Nico. Oh, I don't. Okay. Have, I don't have my sword out yet. We'll have my sword out next turn, but I don't have it out right now. Okay. Hmm. Okay, All right, short sword, sword plus again. two. Yep, that's what I'm going with. That will hit for nine points, which is exactly what you needed to kill it. Oh, thank God. Uh, You're welcome, guys. Um, well, my immediate concern is to get over to Aurelia. I'm pulling the Staff of Healing out, and I'm popping a Cure Serious on her. That'll help. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna... I kind of need my best friend, you know. I need my sister. I know you do. And so, yeah. yeah. She might actually 15, be awake. So... She might actually be awake so... now. Uh, she is awake. She's at, she's down to like four hit points, but she actually negative nine to so. Well, she went nine bad. points to zero, so she actually up to six hit points. Yeah, that's like. So she's down five. Ow! What happened? <sighs> Um, you met the bear. Uh, and the bear won. <laughs> no, you're still alive, so I don't think the bear yeah. actually won that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> Once I know she's alive and safe, then then I'll pop the wand of cure light on her. All right. Yes, uh... Happy stick, and she's back full. Okay. Yes, and I'm just like tearful in her arms there, you know, because it's like, well, yeah, that was the near bear dead. That was near dead. And the theater virtually emptied in the panic. A small man poked his head out from behind the curtain. He's a human, about five feet, about five foot three, fairly spindly. Wearing a dark gray cloak over a freshly pressed white shirt and blue slacks. Black shoes buffed to a high shine. It's obvious he takes his appearances very seriously. Oh dear. He sighs and shakes his head. Curtis, my last juggler. Uh, he notices you. Please come with me back here. Who is for you uh, to follow him. It must be the adventures Blotto told me about. Come along, then. You've more than demonstrated your competence. Does he leads you backstage. Often? Now, he leads you backstage and into a dressing room with a small sofa and two chairs. He looks at you. Sorry, there is, really isn't any other place out there where we could all sit comfortably. And I'd rather not be out there right now. Um, neither would we um, at this point here. <laughs> yeah, well, let me explain. I'm, I'm something of a wizard. He eyes Morova. Perhaps you heard of me, Drazen Humphrey? Um, I would... Morova look. shakes his head and goes, not a clue. Yeah, hold on, hold on, let me, uh... Let's me make... Knowledge Arcana. Knowledge local? Well, that or Arcana, uh, being he's a wizard. No, not really. Uh, well, Knowledge well. local? Well, you know him as the pro proprietor of the Beaumont Theater. He's actually got no reputation as a wizard of all. Well, no matter. I was involved in some intricate magical experimentation one night several weeks ago and things went awry. At first I thought I might had managed to create some sort of minor explosion, but then the strange things started happening. Um 
For example, my favorite soprano, Ginger, lost her voice mid-song and started croaking like a frog. Um, my family of acrobats that worked for me, the Howells, well, they all woke up one morning with two left feet. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> they f- That's a lot. They, yeah. <laughs> well, they wound up forming a dance group and left for a camper. My actors have bungled their lines left and right. My fire breather, a half goblin named Marty, inhaled in mid action and had to be rushed to a temple for treatment. And all my jugglers, except for Curtis, turned into goats and ate the scenery. And then, of course, there was poor Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, mm. I've had a rough time of it. So anyway, that night at the show, I was up on stage. It was pretty late, but I liked being on stage. It had been a good night. Not the qu- quite the gate we've been getting with petticoats, you understand, but pretty good. I just obtained a few new toys from Fyodor. He picks up trinkets for me every now and then. There's a wand, a cloak, and some gloves, and a statue of a dog. Mm. Uh, I knew they were magical. The wand was just a wand. It looked pretty much like any other, except for the tick marks on its side. I couldn't figure out what they meant. There were 11 of them. Mm. The gloves made it easier for me to pick stuff up and to do things that required like precise manipulation. So I, wrote, I wore them a little while while I was working ropes, and I found it much easier to tie off knots and so forth. The cloak was strange. It didn't feel like it was doing anything until I pulled the hood off, and then I couldn't tell what it did. And the statue looked like a dog, but I couldn't figure out what it did or how to activate it. All right, all right. All right, all right. But mosing over, and with that uh, arcana check there, it, this almost sounds like wild magic at work. Mm-hmm. There's ah. Your- Okay. And you said you, know, you would uh, cast some sort of spell, which you didn't think had any sort of effect there. So yeah. I wonder if... Yeah. Uh... Well, anyway, so I put on the gloves and the cloak and I pulled up the hood and looked around. I had the statue that was on the table in front of me. We had a table to use on stage for wizards and stuff, but the goats ate it. Um, goat. <laughs> he looks a little embarrassed. That's what my <laughs> other jugglers turned into. They're a little <laughs> easier to deal with than Curtis. Glad they all did turn into bears, so I picked up the wand and tapped on the statue on the head. And there was this huge, enormous flash of light. And I thought I was dead. Last thing I remember, I was flying across the stage backward, and it felt like I was on fire. Then I hit the wall. When I woke up, everything looked normal, but my toys, the wand, the gloves, the cloak, and the statue, they were all gone. So I kind of need you to find them for me because I think I may have done something really bad and I think I ought to fix it. Well, I appreciate your honesty in that, but... Um, uh, make me a spell... Cra- Actually, uh, Marova will go ahead and make a spellcraft check. I think we both will here. Uh, how about a 20? That will definitely... Definitely but help. And Marova will also get a 20. And just from the, all the descriptions that uh, he uh, has mentioned, yeah, it definitely sounds like a wild surge. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> See, you guys, as for what I've done so far, um, you guys, you're not the first adventures I brought in. There were three other groups. Well, they started looking around, then they disappeared. Haven't seen them since. Okay, we're... There's a message after... The, well, there's a message after the first bunch disappeared. It was a no. I think I still have it. Looks right. at a few sh- pile of papers. Shuffled it. Ah, here it is. In the note, 
written in a very neat, precise hand is as follows. So I'm going to post it in the window here. And it reads, I find myself uninspired by your entertainers. Decided, they decide to remain here for time for remedial instruction. Do try to send better next time. Oh, by the way, I have your items. And I will return them along with your so-called entertainers. Provided the quality of entertainment you offer me improves. You know, this, and I read this over and I look to the others and it's like, things just got a lot more complicated here. There, there's some more level of so, force at work here. So, um, what I'd like to do, I'd like you to hire the, uh, I'd like to hire you guys to investigate this. Now, I can pay you each 250 gold. I have no qualms with that there. I'll look to the rest of that the... That sounds uh... fair to me. Okay. Well, the best way to start, I guess, is to search the theater. That's what the other adventurers did. All right, let's see. As well as that worked out for them. But I think things are the strangest around midnight, so you should probably figure on staying overnight to keep an eye on the place. All right, that's There's how... a knock at the door, okay. and the old woman from the ticket booth sticks her head in. Boy, the city watch is here. They want to talk to you about that mess out there. Can't say I'm su too surprised the way all those folks took off so fast. Yeah. Jason frowns. Yes, mother. He then turns back to, the, to you. Good luck. I don't know what's going on here, but I know it has to stop. All right, we'll do our best then. Okay, so... Uh... Definitely uh, want to start with a uh, nice little once over of the place here, so I'm going to start doing some perception checks around the area. Okay. Oh! Ooh, nat 20. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And you guys are searching the place and it's a decently sized decent sized theater and it's gonna take a few hours to do everything. Um and after you've been at it for about six hours or so, in the distance you hear the bells begin to toll. One, two, three, twelve bells. Midnight. And at the center of the stage, a shimmering mist appears. It hovers, shifts, and coalesces into a doorway. You can't see what's on the other side, but you have a feeling this is a clue you've been searching for. And like a... My guess is this would be <coughs> some sort of a portal of some sort there. there and I'm gonna That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah. Talanta, do you always just agree with everything that I say? And because sometimes yeah. I'm not and mind you, I'm not always right. Hey, but yeah, I will definitely examine that with some uh, detect magic action. Yeah, definitely definitely magical. Okay. Uh, any chance it's like a, uh, conjuration, like a teleportation effect of some sort? Yeah. Yeah, you're thinking something along those lines. All right. Well, yeah, I guess we're going to have to be the entertainment for tonight here. I hope we're ready for this. Oh, joy. Is this, you okay? Yep. Mm. Yeah, I'm good. Wait. All right. So All right. through the doorway? Through the doorway. And you find yourselves on an empty stage much grander than the one in the Beaumont. Black and red curtains hang from the vaulted ceiling high overhead, and the wood of the stage is impossibly smooth, both to the point where the lanterns illuminating the stage seem to dance across the floor as you move your eyes. 
Hmm. As you begin to move toward the other stage, a small box-like contraption appears in the center seat in the front row. The box is about two feet on the side and its front is made of dark glass. The glass flickers and springs to life, revealing the image of an old man. A white beard hangs from his chin, covering his chest and seeming to puddle in his lap. He eyes you quizzically, twirling what appears to be some sort of wand in his right hand. A large fire crackles in the fireplace behind him, and over the fire are rows upon rows of bookshelves, packed almost to the point <coughs> excuse me. You're excuse. A lower flow <coughs> with ancient looking tomes. Books also cover the wall to his right, but the wall to his left seems to be taken up with a chained padlock door. Think Masterpiece Theater. Mm. He nods at you and speaks. Good evening. Hello. And welcome to another stellar performance of my new work, Things Clarence Really Like. You. He looks at each member, party member individually. Are the stars of the show? I do hope you're in the mood to perform. Yes? Here, let me explain the rules. Then I'll be happy to answer a few questions. But remember, you're here to perform. Time is limited. Um, I want to be entertained, and I will give you three opportunities to do so. You're going to be on stage for a while, so I, um, you should comport yourselves as professionally as possible. I hate lack of professionalism. <laughs> they should, you should demonstrate an understanding Sorry, of tragedy, courageous sacrifice, and comedy. And once you've been su suitably entertained, I will release you. I understand you may not have been born entertainers, but I believe everyone has at least a little potential in them. Uh, before you even ask, yes, I do have Humphrey's items. And if you entertain me, they will be given to you. Hmm. And, uh, well, if you're wondering why you're here, I'm old, and I'm tired, and I want to feel again. Make me feel happy. Make me feel sad. Make me feel alive. You have three chances. Yes, definitely. Three chances to entertain me. I hope you're better than the others. And where are the others? And, uh, well, they're receiving remedial instruction on acting. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> I believe the uh, bullshit detector is uh, going off at this point. Yeah. And as he's been talking, vague outlines of scenery have begun to spring up around you. The old man smiles a wicked smile, displaying particularly long, nasty-looking teeth behind his thin lips. Now, if you would step off stage and prepare yourselves, let the entertainment begin. Show me... Tragedy. He waves the wand, and the box with his image fades from view. The house lights go down, and the world around you shifts as the scenery comes into view. You hear a voice from all states, Over here, hurry up, not much time. And you rush off stage, and looking back, see one of the most elaborate sets you ever can imagine. It's a four scene with trees that seem to stretch up through the ceiling of the playhouse, and vegetation so dense you swear it was alive. Except it can't be, because you're able to see the wooden plaster on the back of some of the trees facing away from you. An excited little human rushes up to you, waving a straw hat. He beams with pleasure, but as, as he gets closer, his smile dims somewhat. Oh dear, you're not actors, are you? Are you more of those adventuring types? 
Well, I can work with that, I guess. You should at least be better than the last group to come through here. Ugh, my nose. I'd hate to see the reviews of, of that performance. Okay. So, who's the lead here? No, didn't tell you who the lead was, huh? Nope. Oh, bother. Here, you, um... Points at Sakura. You look, you, you look like a lead, am I right? Of course I am. Drink this, and I'll make you a better actor. <laughs> if we don't at least get one per good performance out of this, it might be, well, my job, please. <laughs> he holds a vial uh, a liquid out to you. Right. Uh, well, I want to try to figure out what this stuff, what's this stuff do here? It's enlightening. It makes you a better actor. Well, strange things are happening, so, yeah. Right here. I drink it. All right. Quaffing it. <laughs> um, and as you step past the backdrops of trees and foliage, a, tra a strange transformation occurs. You feel a gust of wind, and the leaves around you begin to rustle. Except they aren't real leaves, are they? And the grass around your boots leans with the wind, moving gently as the breeze shifts. Except you're standing on a stage, aren't you? Look, you look back at the direction from which you came and see no hint of the outstage area, nor of the stage manager. You stand in what seems to be a real clearing in a real forest, but you have no doubt whatsoever you have a very attentive audience. <coughs> well, I, okay, uh... you, um, you look around. The clearing you're in is about 20 feet in diameter. Okay. Ground is covered um, with grasses that grow to about your boot tops. Um... The trees are all typical, you know, oak, elm, maple. Um, there's a path leading out to the north of the clearing, another one out to the south. Uh, perception? Okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perception. And not too great, but it is an 11. Okay, uh, I'll give you that one. Um, the setting's not perfect, however. There's no sign of wildlife whatsoever. Okay. And, um, Sakura. Yes. Uh, as the, your party members are searching the area, you really don't feel partic like participating in any search. Something feels wrong, empty, almost like part of you is missing. There's something very special about this clearing, clearing but you can't remember quite what. The memories are happy ones, but you have a feeling that you'll never experience quite the same happiness again. Oh, dear. And you just feel like sitting down and moping. And there is a nice little pile of rocks over there you can sit on. I will absolutely do so there. And it's like... Suddenly, I just... you hear sounds coming from the path to the north of the clearing. Someone is screaming in terror. You hear dogs barking and horses trampling the underbrush, all moving towards you. Before you have time to react, someone crashes through the brush at the edge of the clearing and falls shrieking at your feet. Um, it is a human male. Sakura? Yes. You have never seen anybody more handsome or hot in your life. Hello there. 
Are you all right? I I just I look up to this man there, and yeah, I still look like I'm a little down and morbid at the moment here, but well, actually, like, not anymore. Oh, Sakura, yes. you realize that this is what's been missing from the clearing. This person, your one true love. But what has somebody done to him? Charles looks up frank frantically and spots. And Sakura says, oh, thank the gods, I found you. They're after me. They know, they know. He throws himself into your arms, sobbing <laughs> that they know, they know, they know. It's okay, my love. Yeah, please. And a pair of hunting dogs burst through the bushes. Uh oh. Leading several men on horseback. The dogs heal behind, beside the horses immediately, growling menacing at you. The men wearing tabards emblazoned with an image of a child wielding swords more than twice his height, while the sun and moon seem to rest on his shoulders. The image is the vibrant reds, greens, and whites with silver and gold stitching all around. Hmm. Not when anything. the woman slowly removes his plumed helmet and looks down at you, <coughs> the men oh. accompanying him all level crossbows at you, saying, Release that man. Oh. He has insulted House Riyadh and must die. No, I... <laughs> And I just look to them, and I'm like, no. You know. Adria really draws out a sword. <laughs> Shall we play? <laughs> and uh, he holds up his hand. Charles there was engaged to one of my children and fell in love with someone else. This has disgraced my family. Yeah. This, this child of mine was doing Charles a favor by marrying a commoner. Yeah. As lord of these lands, I am well within my right to, qu to kill vassals who break their word. It will yeah. be a quick death. And I will um, not... My daughter, I actually don't really approve of this marriage. My daughter talked me into it as a way to settle a debt owed by his father. And then settle the debt some other way. Hey, there does not need yeah. to be bloodshed this day. Oh, hell no. I will accept payment of the debt from you. Man. I look to my love, one true love, and what sort of payment would you ask? 300 gold. Do we even have our gold with us? That's a good question. Yes, you do. Charles, my love. Uh, I look to him. Him, him. Such as a small price for the love we share between one another. Right, and I will go ahead and uh, flip out a small uh, little pouch of coin there, and uh, I'll toss it over to him. What is it? Him, uh, three hundred gold. Okay. And so. Um, look, I'm a reasonable man, and yes, the debt has been paid. Right. But I'm also a lord. I must uphold my honor. He looks over his shoulder at the party accompanying him. I can't afford to lose the respect of my vassal. Will one of you duel me? Nothing fatal, just a quick duel to show that House Riyad is still honorable. I really goes... <laughs> I looked oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, please. Isn't Oh yeah. Bring it big, man. <laughs> Only I really would say that. <laughs> okay. 
you know, and I'm just I'm holding Charles in my arms there. It's like so. <coughs> uh, let's see here. So he has initiative. So, um. I'll go back to this map, and and I'll just roll Aurelia's initiatives. Oh crap! Nice, brave, and nice. I'm, yeah, not nice. I know. Oh, well, we now know what the tragedy is. And you know what? I'll just add. Since he's a thing already on, I'll add just use Curtis's uh, thing for turn, and he will roll a d20, and he will roll a 7. So, uh, Curtis... No, the Lord and Aurelia will battle. Um, okay. Uh, three touches. Pretty much first one to three hits. Fair enough, then. Yeah. Okay. Ow, one hit. Then Aurelia attacks and hits. A miss. Oh, goodness. Aurelia attack and hits two one Aurelia. He attacks again. Oh, misses, misses barely. Barely missed it. And Aurelia hits the third time. And with that, he goes, You fight well. Third uh, hit's always the charm. Mm hmm. He goes, I will give you the dowry. And he hands Aurelia. A wand. Hmm. Hmm. Curious object. Okay. And Charles sighs in relief. You did it. And he looks at Sakura. You rescued me. He reaches for Sakura. And oh. as he stretches up to kiss you. Well, let me guess. Ew. And scene. Perception check. Oh, perception <laughs> check. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, tell him pace for this later. <laughs> uh, yeah, 23. Uh, <laughs> you hear a soft hiss and a thunk. Charles's eyes go wide and he slumps into your arms, an arrow protruding from his back. <gasps> No! Okay. Uh, um, and as you is hold he, him, is he the scene dead? Fails. The house lights come back up, and the box, complete with the image of Clarence, is back in the front row. Yeah, it's like, like no, I am legitimately man, sobbing there. Yeah, it's like the old man looks at you. That was not bad. Things aren't really supposed to, there aren't really supposed to be really talented people here, Father. Well, here's another one for you to try. Um, why don't you try this one, huh? He grumbles and the lights dim once again. And. The world is dark. 
but not silent. You appear to be in a trench of some kind, the dirt packed hard by the passing of countless boots. In the distance, you hear the clash of blood and blood curdling cries, or the clash of steel and blood curdling cries of the dying. Sticking your head above the trench, you notice small, several small glowing red beads arcing across the eye. And they just seem to be descending towards your position. Uh oh. Um, glowing red beads there. Uh, <coughs> I do believe a spellcraft will identify them as fireballs. Yeah. Incoming! Incoming! Duck! <laughs> duck! And you duck back into the thing, and the <laughs> fireballs seem to land just beyond you. You, the explosion of fireballs has lit the landscape around you, and you're able to see what your ears have been telling you. You're in the middle of a fierce battle, with men and monsters dying all around you. You hear several screams from the direction in which the fireballs originated, <gasps> but <laughs> most of your attention is now focused on the creatures. The creatures. Tell me when you see the new map. Uh, yes, we do. Got it. Got uh, it, man. just noticed your position and are charging you at this point. I will clear this. Dark. Go into initiative. And we are going to initiative. And I will I'll do individual initiative for these bad boys. These are goblins. And <laughs> I think I remember you saying something about that, babe. Goblins, nasty little goblins. Nasty little buggers. <laughs> yes, they are. All right. The goblins, too. These are fast goblins. Ah, goblins shoot and goblins fight. <laughs> goblins cut and goblins fight. Stab the dog and cut the horse. Goblins eat and take my force. <laughs> oh, by the way, hey, uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, Goblin is a play playable race to start. Oh, God. Oh, boy. All right, because... Because, yeah, they suddenly found culture. That's a scary situation. Oh. Ooh. Okay, and then finally, Aurelia. <laughs> going at the speed of a, yeah, going at the speed of Aurelia. Uh, yeah, we need to eventually address our initiative My issues. My poor bestie. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have. Tomorrow yeah, still needs two. initiative. Yep. So let me roll it. Go ahead. Eight. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so the first one that's going to be up is going to be Goblin 3. <laughs> who will jump down to the pit oh, and move up to attack Talana. Well, Tarlana does this little number. Now, well, hold on. Does a 16 hit Tarlana? Tell you in a second. No, 16 misses Trelana. She's got a 20. And I, being this close, hold will on. go short sword on it. Oh, hold on. you got to wait your turn. Uh, he will also come down and attack Trelana. He needs an 18 Great. or better. And that was close, but missed. That was not close. Sakura so is up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to right about there. Um da, 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 da. let's see. Oh, short sword this one that was the problem. What did I have? Yeah, I know I turn on and missed it though. And it's... she pulled the short sword plus one instead of the plus two. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go hey, ahead. Hey, uh, give me a break. I'm a woman. Girl, what is the girl I'm doing? cute. <laughs> uh, she is gonna pull her bow out there, there and uh, yeah, if I can find the butt. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Who's she oh. plinking? Um, I'm plinking number three. Number three for eight points of damage, and you kill. Number three. Oh, very nice, very nice. These are goblins. Okay. Mm. Goblin one will jump down. Oh, okay. wrong one. And I'm about to draw some fire. And attack Aurelia. <laughs> are you okay? Attack my bestie. <laughs> yeah, the water. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Hey, we gotta uh, have in that this case. The goblin. Ne in this case, the goblin needs uh twenty. Hey, get, we gotta have that right dihydrogen out. monoxide here. <laughs> this True. goblin will run forward and attack Morova, who has a better armor class now, and that will miss. Miko. 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 Me. Uh, Miko will fire uh, starting at G4. If I happen to drop it with the first shot, then the second shot will go on G2. Got it. The two is still up. Okay, they are flat-footed still. And that will miss terribly. Nah, those yep. will both miss badly. Okay. Yep. G4 will come in and draw Sakura's ire. And... Well, hell. Uh, but that'll miss. Terlana, you are now up. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna go short sword to this go around. Yeah. And that does not look too good. Actually, that looks really good. A 24? That'll definitely slice and dice. Uh, which one are you going on? This I'm one gonna... or the other yeah. one? Yeah, this one. You will kill. You will kill that one. At this point, G two. God, I will love murder. <laughs> At this point, G two will join the fray, it's... attacking Sakura. <laughs> oh no! And, and miss badly. One. Morova, now that he doesn't have anybody on him, will five foot step back, point his wand o magic missiles, and plink 
54. Blink. And it does four points of damage. Aurelia already pissed off about being killed by a bear. Yeah, almost killed, mind mm -hmm. you. Almost killed, not completely killed. Rolls a natural one. My swing's off for some reason. Well, he might have just... Okay. You know, that bear might have just dislocated a few bones or something there. It's not that we can't fix. Well, we're going to have to fix oh. her. Oh! Oh! Terlana! Oh, oh yeah. Oh. yeah, that's... Oh, that's not, it's not a confirm. She Thank got an AC of 20. But that is a hit. Ow. That is painful. Four. Two points of damage to Talana. Sakura, you're up. You got two bad boys on you. Uh, yeah, I see that. So I'm going to five foot step back there. there. And let's see. All attacks. So longbow. And this is the point where Sakura realizes uh, she's only got one arrow left after this. But that's a 16. Let's go on G2. And that will drop. G2. Okay. Okay, G1 attacking Aurelia with the natural one. Two of them can play that game. Miko, you're up. Hey, uh, starting with G4. Up at uh, second shot, we'll go on G8. Okay. So the first shot is at plus one. Say that will hit. They will both hit, actually. Okay. And so yes, you will. The first attack will drop G4. Okay. And the second shot. Um, G, G1 or G8. G8. G6. Six. Oh, G6. G6. Um, but that is. A uh, 18. Does that still hit? AC 16 is what you're looking for. Okay, then it hits for 7. Okay, and that will drop G6. Talana, you no longer have anybody on you. Oh, boy, I like goblin that. Le there's one goblin left on Aurelia. You don't think I'm not going to defend my bestie? Come on, give me a break. Move into flank yeah. position? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You'd be right up here. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Go ahead and roll your attack. You get a plus two to the attack because you are flanking. And if you hit, you do sneaky dice. And a plus two to the attack will do it. And guess what? Last Mr. What? Goblin. Die. I do love a good fight. <laughs> From somewhere nearby, a black shape rushes in and charges the oncoming throng. In the flickering light of the burning land, you can see a large half-elf wielding a black longsword and carrying a shield emblazoned with a colorful symbol you can't quite make out. He screams a war cry and tears into the monsters. With a single swipe of his great sword, Goblin Shriek. And four of their heads come free of their bodies, yet he can't possibly <laughs> fight all of them. And many of them make their way around him. Of course, whatever he shouted, it seems to has detected the attention of every one of the goblins. And us, probably. They turn and fight. They yeah. rush him, quickly burying him beneath a pile of writhing goblinoid flesh. And then from somewhere beneath the pile, a glow begins to emerge. The creature shriek in pain, and the glow spreads outward 
engulfing them. It's a blinding flash of light. All the creatures are now gone, and only the house elf remains, bleeding from many wounds. His sword across the sword across his chest. All right, Come. I will. I will Come run up to him. I am Ian Blackstorm, general, lost in battle with that thing years ago. I'm dying. It's my time. Let me die, please. From everywhere, it seems you hear the old man's voice. He can't be healed. You heard him. Let him die. I'm going to have my tragedy now. The yeah. general says, it's, it's all right. I've been a prisoner for so long. Death is a relief. I think this is something you're looking for. He lifts the edge of the cloak he's wearing. Take it. And, and please, my sword and shield, may, may they serve you well. His eyes roll back in his head. He twitches gently and is gone. I'll just hold him in my arms there here as he uh, goes through his last moments and just... Okay. I don't know. Everybody you take in your arms lately dies. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I, give me this moment! I <laughs> A cloud of Please dust is rising just beyond next hill. You hear the sound of dozens of feet trampling the earth, and then they begin to cross the hill. They scream in rage as they see you standing amid the destroyed bodies of their kin, and rush down the hill toward you, a tide of goblins too numerous to count. And you don't have the general to help you out this time. Oh, looks like we just have... as the creatures are almost on top of you, the lights come back up, and you're back on the stage. And the image of Clarence it's like his life in the box. Oh, that was wonderful, he laughs. Blackstone finally got what he deserved. How priceless, he pauses, but he is probably pleased with his death, too. Oh, well, I suppose not everything can work out as we might hope. Well, I've had my tragedy now. Had you stayed, that wouldn't have been a tragedy, more, more like a slaughter. And while slaughters may be fun to perpetuate, they're tedious to watch. In that vein, he waves his hand. I could use a laugh. He waves a wand again, and the lights go down. This, light, this time, however, there's an uneasy shift to your stomach, and you're pretty sure something different has happened. And what's that little something and in spite that's happened? of your expectations to com contrary, there's no stage here. A gentle breeze blows through the courtyard in which you stand, surrounded by walls that seem to stretch to the sky. There's no gates in the wall, and it's pretty clear you're alone, except for a single fig figure sitting cross-legged on the ground before you. She looks up at you with old green eyes, and her elven features betray years of wisdom and experience. Her touch was a hint of sadness. Welcome. My name is Shannon. Who are you? Well, I will introduce ourselves here to Shannon. And okay. How did you come to be here? Well, this is my garden. It's my favorite place. I was once a prisoner of a powerful demon. I escaped, found this place, and never left. Um... You must have good hearts, otherwise you wouldn't have ended up here. You know what? If you answer, answer the riddle on the fountain, you can be um, rejuvenated. And with that, she disappears in a blue haze. And in the middle of the courtyard, a fountain bubbles with some, clearest, some of the clearest water you've ever seen. There is a... A bronze plaque on the side of the fountain. Okay, I'd like to read that plaque there. Let me copy and paste it into the window. Okay. And so... Yep. Ah, uh, here we go. Friendly spirits guard Friendly this... spirits guard this place. Appease them and they shall help. Contradict them and they shall ignore. The gifts they desire are those of Ogma. Seek them at the beginning. Speak your answer. Speak that which was 
speak that which is incontrovertible. Hmm. Yeah, this is the uh, point where player knowledge and character knowledge uh, <laughs> widely diverge because <laughs> I suck at puzzles like this. Larry, it's all yours. Yes. Nico hasn't got a clue as to. Uh, what Agma might uh, value more than anything else? Um, that part I think I do know. That's a religion check for me. Yeah, a little better. Uh, what do we know about Agma? Roy is not sure. However. Natural. <laughs> oh God! Uh, okay. Uh, a natural one on intelligence. Okay, I can literally <laughs> just see uh, everyone uh, getting the uh, question. Wait a minute. Wait, and he's looking through a book. It's not here on page three hundred ninety-four. Ninety-four. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, hold on. Let me take a look. That make me guys. Make me intelligence check. Oh God. <laughs> oh please. Intelligence. Ah, Miko's got Miko. Oh, and, and now nice. we and now we start rolling good. That's nice. Look, scroll up and look at the uh, thing, the inscription again. Okay. Look at the first letter of every line. The facts. Yes. Yes. I actually thought of that, but Miko would not have. Yes. And a shimmering blue spirit with Shannon's features appears in the air above the fountain. She smiles benignly down on you. You are wise, young ones. We will gift you with a boon. The one who controls you does not know where you are. Drink from this pool and you will be healed and restored. Then you may rest here if only for a short time, and we will protect you from discovery. Farewell on your journey, and the spirit fades. So you can drink from the pool and rest here. Oh, All nice. spells are rememorized. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Not that we have many spells to begin with here, but that's always a good thing. <laughs> okay. And also, in a booming voice, that of the old man seems to assault your senses from everywhere at once. No, 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 no. That's not where you're supposed to be, damnable wild magic. Here, go here instead. The lights dim, and you can tell you're back on stage. Yes. Wow. The world sure did get big all of a sudden. At least that's what it looks like at first. The room you find yourself in is enormous. With gigantic furniture and gigantic books and gigantic, huh? What? Uh, there's still the right and there's still there's still five of you and you look all right. Except all of your companions look to be about five years old. You look at your hands and realize, my god, you're a kid again. Oh boy. Which doesn't really seem so bad. Where are the cookies anyway? Oh, come on. Okay, and at this point, I need each of you to roll one die 10. I got a five. Five. Sakura, your imaginary friend Igor, or Igor. Wants to, wants to keep playing chase around the room. Right. Miko with a six. Miko, you are convinced that there's nothing more, no, nothing more in the world that's more fun than tickling people. 
No, seriously, I thought that was me. Delana, you already can. <laughs> oh, God, what am I going to do with you? I didn't write this. <laughs> Sounds like something you would write, though, babe. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. Roll Just ignore 1D. the crazy couple. <laughs> roll 1d10. Okay. <laughs> Actually, do a little dicing on the side. For example, this would be Aurelia's. Oh! Aurelia is also, is also chasing uh, Igor around the room. <laughs> I don't know. How about we all chase um, Igor? <laughs> Morova insists that his name is Babo and that I am and I, I am the king of the of the land of Upadu. <laughs> Where should you come up with this babe? Oh See, Bobo! 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 It's easy! Are you sure See? you're not a Noompa Loompa? Oofadoo, it says here you're on page 394. <laughs> okay, Trelana, roll 1d10. You can press the little dice thing on the um, little bar to the right, on the left, and you'll see d10 on it. Or unless you want me to roll it for you. Roll it for me, babe. Okay. And yes, I did not come up with that name, Oofadoo. Somebody else did. <laughs> but it does oh sound like something you come up with. Oh my god, ready? Terlana, yeah. you've had way too much sugar today. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> How bad was it? Terlana, <laughs> you ate all my cookies! Hey, I was hungry. Yes. Okay. Would you like to know what the uh, traits were? Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, you know what? It really needs to re-roll. Because you already got one person doing chase. So ah, hold okay. On. So we can't. And we, already have, you know, we already got so many tickling people. Oh, God. And okay. tickling yeah. people more. Uh, hey, it's fun. And running around. <laughs> hey, Ellis. Okay, that's better. There we go. Arroyo would rather sword fight with her shadow than do almost anything in the world, except my shadow keeps winning. And it's like... <laughs> yes, everybody say dramatic phrases to make this okay. more intense. Okay, the traits were, number one, you had way too much sugar today. Number yep. two, you think everybody is your bestest friend. <laughs> Well, it really number is three, my bestest friend. <laughs> number three, you want every toy except the one you're currently playing with. Yeah. Number four Ooh. is sword fighting. Number five is play chase. <laughs> number six is nothing more fun than tickling. Number seven, you're missing your front teeth and you have a ridiculous list. You also have an enormous colic that shoots almost straight out from your hairline just above your forehead. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to kill eight, you for that one. Of course, number eight was the name is Babo, and you are the king or queen of the <laughs> land of Upadu. <laughs> and number nine, Look you give bird. everyone oh nicknames because your parents give, you get their names right on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> and no, guys, no, I did not write this module. Maury and Christina Mullins wrote this. Okay, okay. <laughs> you knew, if you know them. <laughs> Okay, so <sighs> so at this point, you're in a playroom, and and the fur oh furniture boy. isn't really giant. The furniture really isn't giant. It just looks that way from a five-year-old perspective. There are toys all over the room, including your favorite toys from when you were kids. Mm. There are stuffed animals of all sorts, wooden swords covered in silver paint. <laughs> And authentic Heroes of Raven's Bluff action figures covering the floor. Oh! Yes, this means that your weapons are all over the floor as well. Uh, and it can make walking a little tricky. If you look around the room, 
uh, uh, fire okay, away on him. Fox care. one, Fox one. Somebody please make a fake missile launch sound effect. Fuck. Oh, that'll get it. Uh. Hey, Miko. You kind of vaguely remember something about a dog statue? Somebody's looking for a dog statue? Yeah. There, well, there's a dog statue over on the sh over on the shelf. Go over and tickle it. <laughs> okay. Don't tempt me. There's puppies. <laughs> puppies are cute. The door bursts open, <laughs> and the giant <laughs> lament. No way, he's just an adult. I love puppies. Stands in the doorway, <laughs> glaring down at you. It's Uncle Monty, the husband of Auntie May, who runs May's Kitty Corner, where all of your parents have deposited you while they go out and run errands. Uncle Monty glares angrily, and the puffiness around his eyes seems to make it seems to make it pretty clear he was asleep again. Uncle Monty sleeps a lot, and he doesn't mm. like kids. Uh -oh. Those little, little rodents crap. just need to keep it down. <laughs> he glares some more. No. You know what May's no. gonna do if you don't straighten up? Why she's gonna have to shut this place down. You know, I'll and just... I'll be happy about it. That's right, happy. Kids don't know how good you got it. And Grace, now pipe down. She's going to be back soon. Oh, I just and get he, all uh, I just get all teary-eyed in there. It's like, oh, no, please, no. Oh, no. Okay. okay. And now, <laughs> each of you, each of you, I need to roll one die eight. Each of you needs to roll 1d8. Okay. And I roll an 8. Okay. Miko. Oh, you both. Okay. You got an 8. Sakura. Yep. Uncle Monty used to tickle your ribs. He doesn't do that anymore. You're positive that Uncle Monty is a Rakashna in disguise. And the real Uncle Monty is being kept, ha being held captive in a barrel of pickles somewhere. Yeah, I look for the barrel of pickles. A barrel of pickles? <laughs> I just see Gordon in the barrel of pickles. Miko, Uncle Monty <laughs> used to play ball with you whenever you wanted to. He doesn't do that anymore. You are positive that Uncle Monty is a beholder in disguise, and the real Uncle Monty is imprisoned deep underground. Terlana? Do you uh -huh. Yeah. Uncle Monty's a bad kitty person. <laughs> Talana, you Uncle Monty used to bounce you on his knee. He doesn't do that anymore. You're uh, you're positive Uncle Monty is a pit fiend in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> and the real Uncle Marty is being held prisoner in the abyss. Oh, well, oh. we have got some really screwed up imaginations. Hey, I'm not the fun sugar, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Except for you, you're sugared up. I will give Aurelia. you that. Aurelia. Actually, uh, Morova. Uncle Monty used to bring cookies whenever he came to visit. To, uh, actually, used to muss your hair and call you Scooter. He doesn't do they more scooter you're positive that uncle scooter? monty is a vampire vampire in disguise and the real uncle monty is tied up in a coffin somewhere and finally aurelia <laughs> uncle monty used to read books to you he doesn't do that anymore here this is perfect oh my god for those of you who know quincy's background you're positive that Uncle Monty is a Sahagin in disguise. <laughs> and the real Uncle Monty is trapped in an air bubble under the harbor. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know Quincy's backstory. <laughs> but Sahagin did it? Mm-hmm. You haven't told you that. I haven't told you that one yet. Yeah, but I know you. You're getting ready to. Okay. I will later on. <laughs> I'm cute. You tell okay. me everything. Yeah. <laughs> and Uncle Morty's bad kitty person. 
Um, and 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 let me see here. So, um, so if you look around the room, um, one of the teddy bears begins to glow and it speak, it starts to speak. It takes the eyes of a child, but older eyes overlook. The eyes of a child may see in innocence and hope. The belief in the best of us compels all to abjure evil and seek the good, especially so for the child who always seeks the good. One of you is correct, but only one. Determine which of you knows the truth. Whisper the correct answer in my ear, and I will send the evil away. But only through your eyes can the truth be seen and the glow fade. Okay. Now, so. so you're going to play with the toy some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Like, uh, hey, it's like Teddy Bear. Yeah, it's like, um, okay. Looking at, looking oh. at some of the action figures. First of all, there's a Judge Hangman action figure. Nice. Nice. Well, he wants to play Hangman. The only problem, he only knows the word Hangman, so he tends to lose a lot. He tells, he will tell uh, you guys that one time he was left in the bathroom with Uncle Monty when Uncle Monty took a bath. Ew, Uncle Monty was so And Uncle Monty was so scared of the water, he even got his, never got his head wet. Which means Uncle Monty can't be a Sahagan since they're a creature of the water. Yeah, and they'd have to. Ooh, that's true. Um, that's true. The pet, the pretty unicorn statue, a be uh, unicorn statue, beautiful creation, does all in pigs and creams, wants to play groom the unicorn. And would prefer to do so with. Well, who's the sweetest, most innocent little girl in the party? Oh, probably me. Me! Okay. I'm sweet, innocent, cute, and love sugar. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can hey. go play My Little Pony. <laughs> well, she will remind you that... You're a pain in the so, butt! <laughs> she will remind you that Uncle Monty comes in to check you quite re frequently during the daytime, and she's seen him at his night as well. Which means Uncle P Monty probably isn't a vampire. The stuffed bunny, the stuffed bunny is a lop-eared, frazzled thing that's losing its fur, but it's obviously been well loved in the past. It wants Aww. to play chase. Oh, Tigor! But it will purposely <laughs> run slower than you, who chase it, and when caught, will snuggle up for a moment before asking for another chase. It will tell you that it once heard Uncle Monty describe a sales gir girl as prettier than a succubus, which pretty much means... Um, Succubuses aren't pretty anyway. Uh, pretty yeah. Pretty darn beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But that also must mean that Uncle Monty... It's not a pit pain. Nope. Because they hate succubies and all other demons. Yep. Um, the wyvern pull toy, actually no, the pop-up book of Faeronian deities has told a lot of stories in its day about Sunni and Gan and Tempest and all the other gods. Now it wants somebody else to tell him a story. Oh. Uh, and any story will do, but stories about the, what the gods have been up to lately are especially enjoyed by the book. Will will pop up the appropriate deity whenever he or she is mentioned. 
The book would tell them about the time last week when Uncle Monty was working in the front yard while the book was in the window. Uncle Monty was working on the house and hit his thumb with a hammer. It hit, hurt a lot, but there was a priest on the street who cast some curative magic on him. Um, but and it made him all better. Of course, that means Uncle Monty. It can't be ever casa. Because they are immune to all spells below 8th level. Okay. Which means... It, oh, God. Left. He's a beholder. Okay. Wait. So, so you tell the teddy bear, uh, he's a beholder. He's, he's a beholder. Oh, well, nah, the I'm eyes of the child see clearly what we cannot, but the powers of the child are such as they must know when to request help and when they're ready to take yeah, the responsibility. I, the, yes, yes, we need, <laughs> we need help. Here. <laughs> We will remove the eye tyrant from your lives and make right what has been put wrong. But soon the responsibility will be yours alone. Hey, we get the uh, better version okay. of uh, Komani back. Was he hidden in the yeah. uh, pickle uh, barrel, though? Or deep underground or uh, in the abyss? And the world and... The world shifts. You find yourselves in the old man room as you saw in the glass box. But this time, something is different. <sighs> the door behind the old man's chair seemed to have exploded outward. And the old man, what's, or what looks like it must have been the old man, based on his clothes, is lying on the floor. A pile of twisted, grotesque bodies surround it. Evidence of a massive fight that must have occurred in your absence. All of the bodies are clearly demons, and the old man appears to have been a particularly nasty demon. Just when you wonder what happened, you, be, you begin to hear a soft scratching from behind one of the piles of bodies, and a misshapen head appears, and then another, then another. Oh. And on the far side of them, you see the, shimmer, the shimmering barrier that is your way. Home. I uh, yeah we. And in this case, you actually see one creature. Oh god. Yep. It's a new one, I guess. Pentagon is a small devil. Oh boy. And <laughs> Leave it to the one hopped up on sugar to look at this thing. I want this thing. I want to kill it. Mm hmm. Well, you will get your chance because, ladies and gentlemen, it is initiative. And what the hell is. Let me hold on, hold on. Before you roll initiative, let me clear out the old ones. Now they're clear on my end. They're clear on my end. Now you weren't clear on my end. Okay. Okay. Spin and gun. He's at a turn. Ooh, he's a speedy little devil, isn't he? Yep. He's even faster than those goblins. Yep. And he's going to go on a 22. But that's nice because Sister Miko will be going first. And Trelana initiative. Trelana's pretty quick on the net. Okay. Aurelia. Oh! It really is finally fast. Everybody's decently fast. 
Moreover, we'll let Sakura go first. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, yep, bless Divine Vessel goes up. Okay. Well, first of all, you're not first up yet, however. Oh, mm. But you'll you'll go before Moreover on initiative, but you'll be doing bless on your round? Uh, yeah. And then Actually, the... Miko goes first. Yep. Miko, the spinning gun to Lana Arroyo, Sakura Morova. So the Spinagon is obviously a devil of some sort. Yes. He is a spined devil, yes. I will fire twice at it. It is a 22 and a 13. The 13 will hit. The 22 will hit. I mean, the 13 will miss, but the 22 definitely hits for 10 points of damage. Nice. nice. It is just... Yep, and no, this devil does not have damage reduction, thank God. He's Pentagon. It will fire some of its spines. And with the really looking at the nastiest person that could do a lot of damage will miss. Terlana, you are uh, up. Of course. So I take it you want to move up to attack it? Yeah, I'm going to attack. And I'm going to go with the short. I'm thinking short short sword sword plus two here. Yep. Oh! Oh! Well, you won't get sneaky dice, and you won't confirm the crit. But Man. you'll do you'll max your damage out, and you'll do ten damage to it. Nice, nice. Thank you. And and it's looking pretty darn beat up. And at this point. Aurelia will come up and play with her friend. Go get him, Ray. I do not confirm. Ah, damn. Dang it. But I do hit. And I do kill it. (laughs) Nice. 24 hit points on it. I mean, not a bad creature for first level party. That quick work of that one. All right. All right. And that, yeah, four, there were two of them. Okay. And you step through the shimmering portal and find yourselves back on the stage. And a very surprised half orc drops the flaming sword he is about to swallow as you stand as you, and stares at you as you materialize beside him on stage. From behind you, you hear a shout and look over to see Drazen rushing forward. He turns to the audience, a packed house whose mouths are agape at your appearance. And that, my friends, is our grand finale! Nowhere else in the city will you witness such grand magic. He waves and the curtain drops. You did it! He sighs, he come to the back. And he leads you to the same room where you met at the start of the adventure. You explain to him um, what happened. And you, of course, uh, agree to the, get the 250 gold. He will also give you the items that you collected for him to keep since he's tired of dabbling in magic. Too much dangerous stuff in the world as it is. No problem, no things to keep making more. He'll also give you um, some other stuff just to keep the magic out of the theater. It's strange, he looks at you. I used to think I wanted to know everything. 
But I guess maybe I just wasn't cut out to be a wizard. We all have things we're good at. I put on plays. You save the city. Yes. As he passes the last three items across the table to you, he sighs. Good riddance to those. I hope this never, ever happens again. But if that were the case, as we all know, you'd be out of a job. And. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we and are, so, yeah. and we have a good Scooby Doo laugh at that point. And so, I'll hey. do the magic items. I'll do the magic items first. All right. Okay. Now I believe rogues can use long swords, right? They just can't really dual wield long sword, short sword. Ah, uh, yeah, they can do that. I know those. Okay, it's a, well, not exactly a finesse weapon. They have no problem uh, using a long sword. Okay, well, first of all, you have got the sword of Ian Black, of the Ian Black sword. Oh. Ooh. This is Goblin Hater, a plus two long sword, Goblin Bane. Uh, of course, it, 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 it's pretty much a plus three weapon. If it rolls a natural 20 to hit, the sword executes a sweep attack that does maximum damage to 1d4 goblins if that many are in, are in range. This sword is especially valued by followers of Corlon. It is a plus two. Long. Oh, yeah. Definitely a Tolana weapon. I'll take it. Okay. That would be awesome once we uh, get your two weapon fighting going. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> Third level. The excitement builds, babe. <laughs> yep. I... We also have the shield of Ian Blacksword. This light steel shield bearing the family symbol of Ian Blacksword, a red dragon plummeting towards Earth, and the holy symbol of Coraline is non-magical. However, because of its sturdy construction and perfect balance, it does grant additional plus one bonus to the armor class of any P elf PC wielding it. Do we have any elves in the party? Not that I know of. Uh, I think we're all human, right? I think so. Wait, I thought Torlana was an elf. No. Nope. I speak elf. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a it's a masterwork shield. We can sell it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sold. The blink dog statue. Each use of this item casts a dimension door. Oh. It Ooh. has two charges. It's pretty much a charged item. It can be used twice, but it can do Dimension Door. Hmm. Well, something like that. Best benefit. I don't know. We'll come back to it, okay? Okay. Yeah. Because okay. we also have another Trelana item. Oh? Oh, really? Oh, I'm oh, for this excuse time. me. Bless you. Oh, you're excused. <laughs> you're excused. The, glo the gloves of subtle manipulation. These ordinary-looking leather gloves are a favorite of thieves and tinkers alike. They provide oh. a plus-five bonus to the rogue's disabled device skill. In Hand addition, it over, they baby. <laughs> they, they provide a plus one bonus to any skill check in rope use, gem cutting, sculpting, or any attempt to use a forgery skill to actually forge a document. Oh. Hand it over. Especially the plus five to disable device. There are some scrolls. Oh. There is a scroll of Cure Serious Wounds. I will take that. Alright, got that noted down. 
there is a scroll of neutralized poison. Secure as well. Yep. I'm the only one that can uh, reasonably use those at this point. Okay. There is a scroll of fairy fire. Hmm. Yeah. Who can cast it? Uh, that's a fairy fire. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Marova. Uh, well, to least. Looks like it might be a Marova thing. It is. I thought fairy fire was a pre spell. Um, uh, I'm checking right now on that. I think it's more like a. Uh, it's a druid spell, actually, so yeah, we would need uh, someone that's got used magic device, which I do have a little bit of. Carolina does as well. Okay, um, let's give it to... Uh, what's your uh, used magic device modifier? I'll tell you in a second what she got. Okay. Uh... Plus six. Plus six, and it's a little better than mine, so yeah, let's give that to Talana. All right. Thank you. There is a potion of cure serious wounds. Uh, give that to Aurelia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she might need that one. <laughs> <laughs> After what she went through today, probably. My poor bestie. Okay, and finally we go back to the Blink Dog statue. Alright. Uh, didn't you say there was a cloak of some sort as well? No. Oh, uh, okay. He kept the cloak. The All cloak right. was actually cloak. non magical. The Blink Dog statue. <sighs> well. I really don't have a gigantic need for it right now, so I'll personally pass on it myself. Morova will take it, nobody else will. Okay, that works. Morova can have it. Okay, um... Let's see, let me see if there's any fame. No fame in this module. Aww. Aww, 250, man. Two, 250, <laughs> I, uh, let me see. Yeah, no fame in the module. Oh, nice. 250 gold. <laughs> uh, potion of... So, yeah. Um... XP for this module will be 290, or okay. sorry, 285. Yep. 290 next week. Yeah. And so we so so we. So hold on. So we sold 75. Two hundred and sixty five gold each. Thanks. Uh two hundred and eighty five experience one day unit. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good to me. I'll, uh -huh. I'll I will do the search up in a little bit. Uh so I already got a potion. Yeah, I got a couple scrolls here. Yeah, I can't believe that bear <laughs> did that to her. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah, that <laughs> Honestly, I thought that really was dead, dead. I thought she was toast. Oh, yeah. 
The amount of damage she took, she probably... <laughs> it's like... Yeah, she's lucky. Lucky I know how to kill a bear. So, yeah, what, <laughs> what did we do? We entertained the demon. <laughs> Leave me right. alone, guys. Right. Come on. All right, guys. Uh, now, I needless see... to say, we were a captive audience. Yeah. Very captive. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Well, next, next weekend, part one of the scars that never heal. Oh, nice. Sounds good to me. I'm looking uh, forward to it. Oh, yeah. It is a good adventure. I remember that one. Oh, a great adventure. So. All right. Well, guys, you um, have a good one. I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, this. Quincy went through the high-tier version of that. Yeah. And he got... Ex and, uh... Dennis, remember how the uh, you could get excommunicated from the three temples? Um... So that part, I don't remember per se. I don't remember the specifics. I think uh, the Temple of Sunni, Lyra, and something else... You could get excommunicated from them, meaning they would not heal you no matter what. Oh, jeez. Quincy got excommunicated. Oh, he took the From deal. all three? From all three. Leave it to Quincy. Quincy was not a good, <laughs> Quincy was not a good person. So. Well, yeah, all right, but guys. The... Oh, but he spells the shit out of his daughter. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes. All right, guys. I'll talk to you guys next good... week. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs>